within our hands the ability to weaken the current administration. We need to do that. Any step that we can take that will weaken the administration that we have now, it's a mitzvah gedola to do it. And therefore, it's a mitzvah gedola to vote for Bob Turner next week. I just want to explain what happened. We got a call from the White House. They asked us to delay because the president is speaking tonight. They asked us to start the meeting a little later so that there is no conflict. So um, now that we're clear of the uh, great news which is coming out of the, uh, the White House and the great economic news which is going to create millions and billions of jobs in the U.S., we can go to serious business. Um, I, um, I think many of us share a feeling we don't like politicians. Politicians usually lie, give you babamises, which is a little term you're going to have to learn with Bob. You know babamises. And they tell you what you want to hear. And we're here tonight because of Bob, and because Bob is not, he's telling you the truth, he's not telling you what's popular. He's not afraid of telling you that things the way they are cannot continue. And it's very refreshing. And it's, uh, it's actually, it's came, it came to the point where it's refreshing to have somebody tell the truth. They will do whatever they can. We will do what we have to do. We have a team of lawyers in every district now. I... <laughs> I have enough experience in the last go around. I'm not going to allow a single vote to be stolen here. I believe we'll probably have up to 25 uh, lawyers uh, on the ground in different parts here, volunteers, and some of them all over the country. There are some who know how important this election is from all over the country. Uh, we have boots on the ground from Pennsylvania and from Maryland, from upstate New York. I just spoke to Congressman Raskin from Chicago, or the suburb of Chicago. He's supportive, he's going to help. <coughs> Maybe some more troops from Chicago will even come in. This president, we need to go through the full litany of abuses that he has put on the state and on the prime minister. Although we still enjoy <laughs> intelligence cooperation at a very high level and military cooperation at a high level, diplomacy is a very important tool and it has much longer term implications. This president has been absolutely abusive, enough that it threatens world peace, peace in the Middle East. It has emboldened our enemies. And we have an opportunity now to let him know that that policy will not be tolerated. This vote cannot be taken for granted. If the Democrats lose, he knows the implications of this as well as anyone. Lose this district, his base of support within the Senate and the House will be greatly weakened. They cannot operate with business as usual. The pendulum will have to swing back the other way. There's not a senator or congressman sitting that can say we can take this vote for granted, or we can take his policies and follow them for granted. Our political lives are now in jeopardy. That's how important this loss will be to them. The president knows it. Nancy Pelosi knows it. I know it. There's not a single area that this administration touches that is safe from criticism or is going in the right direction. We can fix it. This Republican victory, and it's a party victory and it will only be in opposition to Obama, will resonate for a full year. It will be seismic, it will be larger than the Scott Brown, and it will have more lasting uh, impact, particularly on relations. So I urge you in these final days, do what you can. It's getting out the vote. In a conference call with Congressman Peter King, no stranger to this community, chairman of Homeland Security, Peter King proudly endorsed Bob on all of the issues that are important to us. The security of our shuls, the security of our yeshivas, the security of our children, 
I don't think there's a bigger expert right now, certainly not in our community and certainly not in this part of the country than Peter King. And Peter King sat with Dove. Peter was on the phone, we were together. And then yesterday I proudly stood with Dove in his home as Dove did something extraordinarily heroic. Dove crossed party lines, as you all know, to the chagrin of his own party, because Dove did yesterday what Dove has been doing for decades. Dove stood up and did what was right. It is my pleasure to introduce a legend in our community, Assemblyman Dove Hyken. But when I spoke on the floor of the Assembly to present my views on the subject, about an hour and a half later during the debate, my colleague got up on the floor of the assembly and he basically said to the world, he basically said that he was standing up as an Orthodox Jew to support gay marriage. Some of what he said I'm still trying to decipher. I'm not joking. I'm still trying to understand because he said something about his two sons getting married in an Orthodox synagogue. I didn't know exactly what that meant, but I was... I gotta tell you, I was sitting on the floor of the assembly and I was shocked. Because, you know, he, had a, he has a right to have his point of view. And I have a right to have my point of view, and his point of view is something that automatically disqualified him from my being able to support him. I told him that to his face when he came to my office re recently. And then the question was, you know, what am I going to do? And I gotta tell each and every one of you, number one, now, Bob Turner is a mensch. He's a good guy. He's someone that I think people in this room, on a personal level, understand. He's a businessman. He understands the kind of things that it takes to get this country done. You're going to be able to vote next year for president and a Congress and many other things. But I'm telling you, in this district, which I live in, in Brooklyn, in this congressional district, an opportunity like this you ain't getting again. It ain't, it's not coming around again. This is the race that now the country is watching, that now they are writing about all over the country. Bob Turner is not supposed to have a chance. Nobody was supposed to look at this race. No one was supposed to consider the race. And it had nothing to do with who was the better candidate because in politics very often that's not the most important thing. It becomes a label. You know, I'm a Democrat, I'm voting for the Democrat. And we Jews sometimes have a tendency to do that. We're the ones who sin in that area a lot. Maybe it's changing a little bit. I believe it is changing. It's definitely changing in districts like this, in the 9th Congressional District. We have an opportunity, because this is the only race, because it has become a race about certain basic issues, one of them being Israel. And by the way, there's nothing to be, you know, you don't have to excuse yourself that it's about Israel, uh, but other things are also important. They are, but there's nothing wrong with saying this is a critical issue to me. By the way, if you don't support the positions of the gay community, just that issue alone, they will not support you. That's okay. And it's okay for us to say, you can be right on all the issues, but if you're not right on the well-being of Israel, then I'm not gonna support you. That's always been my criteria, always. You can be right on every single issue that is important to me as an American and as a proud American. But if you're wrong on Israel, I'm not supporting you. No way. Because we understand that Israel's survival is always in jeopardy. We know that. There are no guarantees in this world. So we have an opportunity. And Bob Turner represents that opportunity on many different levels to send a message that will reverberate not just with Barack Obama, I remember when the Prime Minister of Israel came to the White House and was treated worse than a leader of any third world country. I'll never forget those, we those days when he was brought, not through the front of the house, but through the back of the house. Oh, by the way, no pictures permitted. This is the Prime Minister of the democracy in the Middle East. This is the Prime Minister of a friend of the United States, and he was treated in such a horrible way, like no one has ever treated a Prime Minister of Israel. You agree, you disagree, you have to have respect. We call it Derech respect. I remember that. But what I remember even more than that, I didn't expect much more from Barack Obama, because 
I had my concerns before the election last time. I was hoping that I'd be wrong and that he would turn out to be a great friend. But what bothered me even more, and I'm being honest with you, what bothered me more is that I couldn't find Democrats in the Congress to speak out because it was a Democratic president. If it would have been a Republican, they would have lined up to condemn the Republican. If it would have been George W. Bush doing the exact same thing, every Democrat would have been online on Sunday morning at a press conference to condemn and use strong language. You couldn't find a Democrat. You couldn't find a Democrat. I don't want to mention names. Not senators, not members of the House. Until they got around to it, you know, we don't need that. I mean, one senator said to me, well, what do you think I should do? I said, what do you mean? What are you waiting for? You see what's going on. You see that people are angry. You have an obligation to speak out. But it took a while, and that's wrong. Elections have been lost and won by 10, 12 votes recently. I know some of those campaigns where people ended up after the election by 10, 12 votes, where hundreds of thousands of votes were cast. It could be that close. And that's how we have to play it. We have to play it that you personally can make the difference in this election. Because of your chevra and your friends and your neighbors, those 10, those 15, those 20, you can make the difference. So imagine if we multiply that by everybody here. And the same thing in Brooklyn and other places. So I am uh, absolutely, you know, I I'm happy to have the opportunity to be here, to speak to you. Uh, as someone who has been in public office now in my 29th year and, and have been through all kinds of races and watched all kinds of things, you know, politics, every day counts. Uh, there's a long, you know, it's only a few days, but it, there's a long way to go. Because every day, you never know what's going to happen. But I'm telling you, you can win this election. I only care about the individual. Is that person going to be effective? Is that person going to, to be a leader? Is that person going to stand up for the principles that are important that the person spoke about when they were running for office? I am very, very proud, and it doesn't matter to me who's upset at me. I just want to make sure, to the best of my ability, that God is not upset at me. The rest, they'll get over it. And if they don't, so be it. So I'm saying to everybody here, we have a beautiful crowd, and I thank the host for opening your house, you and your wife, for opening your house to this beautiful, beautiful event. Now, please. I've got to tell you, we're on the verge, with Hashem's help, with God's help, the verge of a victory that will be headlines in every paper in America and beyond. And beyond. That's what this race has become.